one, we are live. Welcome everybody back here on Siegel Talk. It's a, a Friday uh, noon in New York City and Midtown uh, Manhattan, a slightly cooler day after the tropical heats we had in the last uh, days. And, um, and we are back on Siegel Talks with voices from around the world uh, on theater, on performance and, uh, and uh, artists who uh, try to create meaning and get meaning from working in this uh, field we are all in and that we like. Uh, so I welcome all our listeners um, also and thank HowlRound for um, hosting us. Um, we just had yesterday a wonderful uh, panel on puppetry, global uh, puppetry, but also on American uh, puppetry and on the shifting uh, uh, field that we are all um, we all live in. And uh, so I thought it was quite a quite a beautiful um, reminder of how big this field um, really is. And Wednesday we heard from uh, Bangkok, from Thailand. Uh, by Pam, an organization of 10, 11 uh, uh, countries of Southeast Asia and how they are dealing with the time of change, the time of uh, Corona and what's happening now and what will uh, be coming up. And now we come to another country, um, slightly more well-known perhaps, France. Uh, and uh, we had many French artists with us. And we're so thrilled um, to have um, uh, um, with us today uh, Marine Bachelot-Nigen and Penda Diouf. Thank you both uh, for, for being uh, with us. Um, we have a great, great uh, relation here in New York, also with the French Cultural Services, Nicole and Laurent, fantastic, uh, fantastic colleagues and have been supportive of our talks and as have been uh, so many others like Emmanuel de Mongazon, people who we, we locked so, so closely um, with. Um, they are both based normally in Lille, this is a town, if I'm right, about an hour, an hour and a half uh, uh, south of Paris. Um, just became soccer champion uh, uh, in front of Paris Saint-Germain. A very big deal, un unexpected. And they're also famous for La Piscine, a famous museum where it used to be a swimming pool, a public pool, if I understand right. And now um, it has a fantastic galleries where you see the, the uh, contours of the sculptures reflecting in the water. So uh, bonjour, uh, where are you both? Uh, Penda, where are you? Are you in Paris and Lille? Uh, bonjour, Frank, hi. Uh, I, I am now in Tunis uh, for a residency. I'm hosted by the French Institute uh, in Tunis for a month. Oh, fantastic. So you are not in uh, Europe at the moment. You just, you just got there? I will be returning to France at the beginning of, of July. So you must be in uh, in quarantine still. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah? I, I still have four four days until four days. I go outside. Yeah. Amazing. So uh, so into and Marine, wh where are you? I am in uh, Caen, uh, Normandy, in uh, uh -huh. in Comédie de Caen, the theatre, uh, and I will uh, uh, have a mo much time in Normandy uh, in this period because I applied for the direction of. Uh, of a theater in Rouen, and I have a lot of real meetings uh, to do uh, and see people and see shows. So mm -hmm. that's very really nice. Wow, that's it's a very uh, significant uh, theater, right? It's uh, one of the state theaters. Uh... Yes, it's a uh, Centre Dramatique National in Rouen. So uh, well, yes, we 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 are we are many artists to to apply, and we have to to make this <laughs> concourse. So how does it feel as a young uh, uh, female director, artistic director, artist? Um, I think we just lost um, a Marine, uh, at least on my screen. Um, Penda, maybe we go, go to you um, right away. Um, uh, I might read a little bit for our audience, you know, about you and your work. Um, Penda is an author playwright and librettist, and she's based in Lille, um, as we said, and together with Anthony Thibault, she co-founded a label, uh, Jeune Text uh, en Liberté, so a label not for music, but for, for, for books, plays, is that right? For theater, yeah. For theater, yeah, and she's an associate artistic uh, at the Centre Dramatique National de Valence, uh, and, uh, which is led by Mark Lane, and frequently she gives uh, also writing workshops and shares her shares her um, experience and her play La Grande Ours, the, the Big Bear, 
Is that right? A she bear, a she bear, uh, uh, is published uh, by Quartet, Quartet Editions, um, um, while her play *Piste* was published in 2001 in France, but also in Germany. It has been uh, translated and uh, staged by Aristide Tananda, who is a good friend of us, who was at the Siegel Center uh, for Pen World Voices, our literary festival. He's such a fantastic uh, worker and also created that important festival. And it was shown your work at the Festival d'Automne. My our good friend Antje Ögel um, also said, you know, it's time for you to speak uh, to Panda and you invited Maureen to come um, and with us. So um, Panda, tell us a little bit, how, how was uh, last year, were you in Lille uh, during the time of Corona? Um, I was not far from Lille because I was on a writing residency in the north of France, I think 30 kilometers from Lille. Mm -hmm. and when uh, the, uh, the quarantine started, I left the residency to return home in Aubervilliers. Uh, Aubervilliers is in the suburb of Paris. And uh, this period was very hard, but I think everybody shares the same uh, feeling about it. Um, and um, it was uh, very difficult for many things. The first one, maybe as a playwright, we don't have a lot of uh, help from the state. So I think I had six months without any payment last year. So for this thing, it was a little bit difficult. And um, maybe um, uh, there was a lot of, um, I don't know how to say, but maybe um, there was a lot of police violence uh, during the first lockdown. Uh, as I told you, I, I, I used to live in Aubervilliers and it's mm. a very working class area in France. Um, and I heard a lot of police sirens. Uh, and we, when we had to go outside, we had a permit and there was a lot of abuse during that period. Um, I remember a black mother, she was living in Aubervilliers too, and she was uh, um, uh, tazée with a, ta a taser. Mm -hmm. Taser? Uh, yeah, because... Taser, mm -hmm. uh, taser thank you. Uh, because she was getting food for a child. Mm -hmm. uh, another, another example, a young teenager I know, his name is Amin, uh, he is mentally handicapped and he was beaten by the police. So for all these things, it was very hard. Uh, in addition of the, in addition to the shock of the coronavirus, and I think we have been a lot um, in, in infantilized, a lot by the government, mm -hmm. and the, the the distance between the police and the population is increasing. Mm -hmm. So for for these things, it was difficult, and maybe uh, the theaters were closed. And uh, there were a lot of um, proposition on Zoom, uh, but maybe too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I led writing workshops on Zoom. Uh, at the beginning, I didn't feel like it uh, because I wanted to share this, this thing with people, but we couldn't. So at the end, people were very happy because maybe it was a space for them uh, to escape during this difficult period. And, uh, and we were very alone. Um, so maybe they needed it. So I continued, I pursued. And of course, uh, even if it was, um, uh, it was great, it was, it was, it was great uh, during this time, this specific time, I prefer to do things and share, of course, with, with other people. Mm. So, yeah, it was very... <laughs> quite, <laughs> quite a complicated time. Yeah, we experienced also very uh, strongly that moment of Black Lives Matter, where these, what already has been there has over centuries, you know, but it all, all of a sudden Corona crystallized everything. It was visible like a mic under a microscope or as Richard Schechner said, you know, like a uh, nuclear reactor is, you know, is melting, but the roof is open and you look inside in real time. Um, so that must have been a, a tough experience for you going back in your 
in your this is the town you grew up right uh, oh no, i grew up in dijon oh in dijon mm -hmm. i used to live in aubervilliers du during uh, 13 years 13 years and, and after and i left the the first <laughs> my first decision after the quarantine was to to move to, and to i move and to live. I, I moved to yeah me. There was, we also heard, you know, from Romania and also other places, you know, where people said that people who don't, you know, whatever, are part of minorities, they rather looked at the ones who carry the virus almost like a medieval uh, thinking, you know, of, you know, some people who don't look like us or like the majority, you know, are the ones who brought that in. So completely wrong, it's so, so racist and... Uh, and, uh, and it's just, but also a, a, a reality. Did that? Did the Black Lives Matter movement? Did that uh, somehow um, help that discussion? Do you feel it had an influence for mm -hmm. you and for your work and in that Ubervie in the town? Uh, I think um, the the sad murder of George Floyd had a big influence influence, but all over the world, because there were big demonstrations. Uh, to fight racism and say that uh, Black Lives Matter. And in France, uh, Adama Traoré um, uh, yeah. died in the same condition as mm -hmm. George Floyd five years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, his, uh, his sister, uh, Asa Traoré, has been demanding justice even since, and she's still being harassed by the police and, of course, by the state. So it was a real wake up. Uh, for for all of us, um, because it doesn't only happen in the United States, but also in France. And uh, during the demonstrations, there were a lot of people and young people, and that gave me hope for for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. France, in a way, such a great country also has a great history of theater yet is also struggling you know with its past and with with uh, global problems of you know um, of, uh, climate change of uh, of uh, racism of uh, the hate against women and um, like i could say these are global global issues do you feel for you in this time uh, did something change uh, you for you said you couldn't work you were not paid um you experienced in Aubervilliers uh, very closely, something if you would have been in Paris with your friends, it would not have been experienced maybe as, 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 as uh, immediately. Do you feel this uh, uh, changed your work, changed you, your thinking? Mm, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, because we, I think we are still in this crisis so it's difficult to have enough distance to, to, mm -hmm. to speak really about it but I can say maybe that um, I, I I didn't discover because I knew it already but uh, now it's um, um, relevant for me uh, that um, uh, we uh, we have to pay more attention to our environment, uh, to this particular place of people in the world in relation with uh, animals, with plants, with the trees. Uh, and maybe the fiction will be um, inspired and maybe mine too uh, by all these uh, theories uh, by, um, about um, a change of paradig pa pa paradigm. Um, there is a lot of talk in France about uh, the basket fiction and uh, about the, 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 uh, that fiction as a, uh, about the, the so, sorry, <laughs> about the, the thing that fiction has privileged uh, the hunt, the hunter, mm -hmm. uh, the battle against, uh, with, with weapons, against mammoth. Uh, but mm -hmm. as neglected maybe the basket, which is uh, a very useful, um, um, not weapon, but uh, thing <laughs> to mm -hmm. feed people and to bring food home. And basket, maybe, you mean to collect into like a yeah. little basket where instead of hunting and killing, you, you, and maybe, you know, the agriculture and the ideas of, yes. yeah. 
Yeah. So maybe uh, mm -hmm. our way to, to write will be uh, impacted by all these theories and all the thinking about um, yeah, the crisis and the environment. Mm -hmm. Marine, we make, welcome back, and we will come back to you in a second. Um, Penda, one more question. Tell us a little bit, what is your work all about? Why do you work with Aristide, um, you know, and um, that was a French director, which one would think, you know, so what, what, what do you do? Mm, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think... Um, I like to write theater because um, we uh, it's a it's a way to, to, to speak to, to people all over the world. Uh, and I think art is the best way to to join us, mm -hmm. uh, like dancing or painting or, or music. And uh, it was important for me to to work with people from the African continent and with Aristide Starnagda uh, to show that uh, stereotypes about Africa are always the same, poverty, misery, uh, illness, um, and things like that. And I wanted to show that we could do uh, uh, tell our stories. And with Pist, uh, with Aristide, I'm uh, speaking about, I'm telling about the genocide in Namibia uh, during the German colonization. And uh, there's not so much people who know this story. So I wanted to put some light about, about this fact, uh, this terrible fact that um, the first concentration camps were in Africa. And uh, a lot of people died in very, awful uh, ways and nobody knows about it and nobody speak about it so it was important for me to to write it and to to work with and um, with someone from the continent mm -hmm. so like Hond Ours is about uh, Namibia and is that uh, Pist is about Namibia piece, oh, okay. and mm -hmm. about my my childhood as a black woman uh, in France uh -huh. uh, and La Grande Ours is more um, uh, about, um, it's, a, it's a fiction, but it can be very real because it's about a woman. Uh, she has a paper, uh, a candy, 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 candy paper, candy and paper. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it downs on the floor, it put downs on the floor, and uh, she has to go to the uh, police station, she stays there a very long time, and it's very awful and stressful, so to, uh, to get more energy and to find herself, she began a transformation, and she, uh, she, she, uh, she, she transformed. Transformed. A metamorphosis. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. In a in a she bear. Incredible, incredible, play, incredible idea, and um, and uh, and I think it's from someone we should uh, uh, really um, and see see here, and hopefully it will will make its way um, um, to the U.S. Um, uh, Marine. Um, Tell us, we talked uh, just with Penda also a bit that this is a time of awakening, a time of change. Um, you are highly respected uh, as a director, uh, also a playwright, and you are applying as a young woman also for a position right now in France. Um, how is this moment? What, what are your ideas? What do you want to do different? What's, what is your vision? Yes, I'm sorry for the short, for the electric Don't cut. <laughs> it, it happens in theater. Yes, uh, I heard Panda and I agree with her. Uh, we have to change our way of doing and it's quite difficult because uh, now uh, in France from, uh, from a, a few weeks, uh, theater are reopened, uh, people can, can come and there is some kind of frenzy uh, and we enter uh, in this new frenzy that is similar to, <laughs> to, 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 to the one before the lockdown, even, uh, even worse. And uh, it's, uh, to slow down is something difficult to do uh, because there is also a very big uh, concurrence between artists, 
uh, many young and emergent artists, women artists, um, black, Asian uh, and uh, Arabic uh, artists are uh, structurally uh, discrim discriminated by this system and the capitalist system uh, uh, from after the crisis would be very, very tough and hard. So I think there is something to, um, to balance and to be very uh, attentive and uh, to, to, to all the phenomenon uh, that affect all the society and the hearts, um, how, um, how our backgrounds and, and we are also in, uh, in all this. I think um, my, I, I, I was uh, hearing Panda and I was listening to her and I, I, I am now trying to write about the period of the lockdown, the, 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 the violence of the police being in the lockdown, the, the change of paradigm that, that affected us. It's really hard to, to write about this, uh, this period. And well, uh, what changed, for example, my, my next project, uh, because uh, it's a strategy also to, 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 to get out from this crisis, I want to, um, to work on, uh, on a woman, a Vietnamese woman who lives now in France, she is more than 80, 80 years old, and uh, she, she went through the Vietnam War, she was, uh, she was, uh, she, 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 she received the Agent Orange on her body and she lost her first child in the jungle in the Vietnam War. And she is now making uh, a trial uh, process uh, against Monsanto, Dow Chemicals and other petrochemical uh, agro-industrial societies, American societies. And well, I want to focus on her, write something on her because she's at the intersection of uh, anti-imperialist, ecological, feminist uh, fights. And I want to carry a story uh, in, in school rooms, in, in classrooms, in theaters. Uh, I think we, we realized with this crisis that it was important to make theater also uh, outside uh, of the of the um, of the of the theaters, uh, we need to have a theater outside uh, at the open air, uh, in classrooms, in uh, in libraries, uh, in uh, bibliotheques, and so on. Uh, I think we need to be very adaptive to this new context to meet uh, new publics, new people and to be very careful uh, with this adaptability, agility, not to, um, to answer to, uh, to the capitalist system, because we, we have to adapt, but uh, not at all prices, you know. Uh, I could say that, and with uh, theater, writing, plays, and shows that uh, reflect the reality, try to think about it, but also open uh, spaces for imagination, dreams, uh, political uh, utopies, and, uh, and so on. I, I would say that. Mm. Yeah, we, we do read a lot in the news about, you know, that complex relationship of the French police now to its uh, own citizens, um, uh, how brutally it looked, uh, also that there was an attempt by the government, you know, that any video, any photo would be forbidden. You couldn't uh, publish it. It has been taken back. Um, did you see, where, where were you during the lockdown? And did you see, uh, as were you an eyewitness of people, your family or friends, were they affected by that? Or you saw the demonstrations, you were part of them? Is it, uh, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, in, during the lockdown, I, I was already in Lille and I had the, the chance to have uh, trees and birds uh, <laughs> in the outside. I didn't have a, a garden, but I couldn't see the, the nature. Um, and well, when, uh, when in, it was in May or June, uh, yes, I returned and I came back in the street in demonstrations against this uh, police violence. 
So it was very important to see all these people in the streets, uh, uh, despite the, the strait of, uh, of the virus. And we were in the street uh, to, to demonstrate. But, well, to demonstrate against the police, the police is always very, very, very present to, to repress. But from many, many years, it's just like that in, in my um, hometown, Rennes. It was a real laboratory for, for the government to, to, to repress the, the demonstrations. So we have the, yes, we are used to this uh, police violence. And well, I, I, uh, as for me, um, Haitian, Haitian people, Haitian young boys are, I think, less um, uh, targeted by the police, uh, respect uh, if if uh, if I think to black and, and uh, Arabic people, uh, which are really the targets. Uh, the 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 discretion and invisibility of uh, Asian people is is also something I I, I work on and, and write on. But I would say, uh, of course, I am concerned, and I I had to. Um, in uh, last November, I, uh, I was about to create my, uh, a new play, uh, which is called uh, Aquila, le tissu d'Antigone, and which uh, that talks a lot about, um, about the friends of today, uh, about terrorism and, uh, and uh, police, police violence, because it's a story of, uh, of Aquila, and she's a young, uh, young girl from high school, and uh, after an, uh, a terrorist attempt in France, uh, she's in, in, there is a, a, sil a minute of silence in her, in her high school. And during this, uh, this um, silence minute, she puts um, a hijab, uh, on a, 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 a white hijab on her, on her head. And then she, she defies uh, the, the law of the, of the high school and of the Republic. And we, uh, and, 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 and then we discover that she's uh, the, the sister of a, of a terrorist, of the terrorist that committed, one of the terrorists that committed the last attempt. And this is a rewriting of uh, the myth of Antigone. Uh, she, she will be the only one from her family to, to go to the funeral of her brother. And she will uh, keep this hijab on her, on her, on her head uh, in, in her high school, which is uh, really forbidden by the forbidden, French law. Yeah. Mm. And so many things will, will happen in her high school. So that's a way for me to use a myth to, to, to talk about uh, the, the issues of the French Republic. Uh, one of um, her other brother is died um, uh, years uh, yeah, a few years ago, in a, in a police crime, he was he was uh, killed by the police. So this young girl uh, carries the story of uh, of her brother and try to and tries to, mm -hmm. to 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 understand what happened to to her brother. So that, that the, 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 this show uh, would be showed to the real public in uh, next uh, October, but we had the chance to finish the rehearsals and to play it uh, twice uh, in uh, in a high school uh, with uh, with pupils. So it was mm, uh, actually really interesting. What instead of the theater, which is normal, no, you in the high school where basically is the environment of the play and what seems to be uh, like an emergency uh, uh, solution actually perhaps is closer to, you know, the, the spirit of the play and the setting might, you know, be uh, much more thought provoking. Penda, do you think um, for, for your generation as well, for Marie, will it be like a PG? Will it be like a pandemic generation? Is this imprint of this year something you, want, you will, uh, will carry through life? Is that strong or do you think it was an interruption and we will go on back to where we were and, and keep on fighting. It actually was already there before. Um, I think it's, uh, this crisis was like a mirror and uh, everything that happens now was already here uh, years ago, but we didn't really pay attention on it. But now, it's, it's funny because during the first quarantine, we had a lot of meetings about uh, the, the, le monde d'après, the world of after Corona, 
what we are going to do uh, uh, in, in theater, maybe to, um, to, uh, to, to think differently the touring for the place, or uh, to think about uh, the environment, or uh, about the, the scenography of the, of the place. And, uh, and about the relationship between big structures, big theaters, and uh, 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 small companies. And as Marine said, uh, everything went very, very quickly after the quarantine, and we didn't get the time to do everything to think about it. And I think the the thing we uh, the thing we need now is is time. Time to think about what happened to us, uh, what tra trauma uh, happened for us, because it was like a trauma for everybody. And uh, to really uh, uh, try to find another way to, to live, because we are going yeah, uh, in a very, um, very fast in this capitalism. And this capitalism is very cruel. And I think people who were a little bit um, uh, in difficulties, now they are surviving. And we, I, I am speaking about artists, but a lot of other people uh, in France or in the world are in this situation of uh, surviving. And I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I, I hope we will, uh, uh, it's like a lesson and I hope we will listen to it. Mm -hmm. It is true, as far as I know, France had one of the hardest lockdowns um, of all European countries, perhaps Italy uh, uh, till the end of last year, but you continue to have a lockdown at, till six o'clock, I think for months that people had to stay at home. And uh, so it is surprising that on one hand it was so rigid and then all of a sudden it opens up and the idea is let's pretend nothing happened, we should, uh, we should go on in that way. You, you both talked about the police violence, actually also, which surfaced in Britain, um, you know, also, you know, this murder of the woman, now it became clear, actually a policeman was her killer. It was, uh, and, um, and a demonstration during the time of Coma was really uh, dissolved uh, with uh, extreme violence. And the idea of theater and the idea of art the idea of beauty, um, of course, is, you know, to find solutions. They are not violent. They are actually the opposite, in a way, to the ideas of police or military or weapons, um, as you said, the hunter against the other. Um, does it work? What do you believe in what works? Or what have, what's your experience? Is that perhaps um, in the play in the high school, is that working better than bringing the high school kid to the theater? Uh, or uh, Panda, what, what, are there new strategies? Are there new ideas you guys are um, exploring in, in face of you know, what we say, you know, this uh, capitalism that is cruel and uh, which we have seen is uh, also not fully working. Um, especially also here in the US. So what are strategies? Are you finding new ideas, new, 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 new solutions you could help us to, to, to share and um, would be good for us to know? Uh, with my, uh, with uh, the label, uh, Jeune Texte en Liberté that uh, uh, we do with Anthony Thibault, who is a, a director. Um, it's been, I think it's been going on for seven years now. And from the beginning, we have been uh, thinking to get out of the theaters, to meet people, uh, those who are not used to it, or who are not at ease uh, to enter in a theater. So we have been um, organizing readings uh, for seven years in different places outside of theaters. It can be in parks, in libraries, in bookshops, uh, in women's associations, um, Last year, we, we had an appointment to do it in a hairdress salon for Afro Air because we stay there for a very long time. So uh, it was the perfect place. It's for, for me the perfect place to listen to stories and to meet the author afterwards. So uh, yeah, we, we thought about it since a long time, uh, for a long time, uh, but, but um, we are happy that now <laughs> Theaters uh, want to do want to do this and want to develop it, uh, but I think it's not enough. <laughs> we have to 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 work on our uh, representation, 
to think about who is uh, uh, telling stories, who has the money to tell stories, uh, who is on stage, and uh, 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 for which role, uh, if it's a stereotype or not. If you always take a black woman to do a prostitute on, on stage or uh, the, the, the wife of a migrant, or it, 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 uh, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't want that anymore. So I think we have a lot of uh, different ways to, to work on it, to have a better, not a, a, a more inclusive theater and more, um, uh, and more space for people, uh, particularly people who we don't hear about uh, to express themselves and to, to listen to their stories and to welcome people. In theater, welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <It's> important. <laughs> yes, I, I I really agree with Penda. We have uh, we have to change our ways to do. Uh, but as well as Penda, in my theater company that exists from 15 years, we always uh, did some shows uh, in theaters on the stage, but also uh, theater paysage, landscape uh, theater also things in uh, libraries, parks, uh, so classrooms, and so on, because um, contemporary writing that uh, speak about contemporary world needs to meet uh, the people everywhere. And, um, and so uh, I think we need to invent circulations between theaters, stage, stages, and, and the outside. And also to invent, I think, uh, moments of uh, conviviality. Uh, for example, I remember that uh, one of my uh, best uh, souvenirs was, um, was a, a karaoke uh, that was um, proposed by, by a theater because I, um, one of my last uh, shows uh, is about uh, Vietnamese, Russian, French family memories, and one, uh, one uh, in one moment of, of the show, we do a karaoke. We, we are in a karaoke in Vietnam, and, and the world is entering this, uh, and the, the, the big story entering uh, is entering this karaoke. And uh, the theater uh, in Choisy le Roi in Paris, uh, they, they proposed to do a karaoke, and some many people came for this evening of karaoke. Uh, because they wanted to sing. Uh, there was a group of uh, migrant, migrant people. And this was a very, very nice moment with drinks, with uh, singing, with singing in every language, uh, uh, not so much English, but, uh, but French, Farsi, uh, uh, Arabic, and uh, Creole, and uh, so many Portuguese, so many Brazilian, so many languages. And just uh, with songs, that, that, that carried uh, nostalgia and uh, from, uh, from the native country. Uh, um, and I think we have to invent uh, with our shows, uh, all the things, uh, have a drink, make a concert, uh, share a meal, um, where everybody can bring, can bring something. And we have to reinvent ways of, uh, of sharing a, because uh, you know the the art artist background are quite uh, <laughs> are quite uh, yes on themselves. So, so we are, we really have to to reopen uh, uh, things and to go uh, in in so in uh, in schools, but also where there are whole people that have a lot of memories of uh, the world, uh, the the different. Uh, Yes, uh, all mm -hmm. the different stories. And when I when I work as well in a, in a hospital or in prison or in a, in a, where there are retired people, I can I can listen and and hear a lot of stories that that uh, that uh, are really uh, uh, rich to to feed my my work in my work in work my writing work. Sorry. Yeah, so that we are really a call to reinvent and to start 
new or new front. Penda, as an on, as a question, perhaps you, as an honest answer, you were with Aristide at the Avignon Festival. Doesn't get much better. You were in the hair salon where you did the reading of the Afro hair. What worked better? How did you feel in these moments when your work was done? Uh, after Avignon? No, how do you compare both experiences? Like ah, on the big okay. stage of a festival on world class, and then you were in a hair salon. How, tell us about the experience of it. Is it oh, what, uh, what, what felt closer to your work? Or was it uh, very different? Or at least it actually was the same? I, I would be curious to know. Um, um, uh, um, it's no, it's it's different because uh, when you rehearse, you are alone, and it's a monologue. So I was alone on stage, uh, and uh, the, the rehearsals. It was easy for me because only Aristide and his assistant were there, so it was not so much people. I was not so impressed <laughs> because mm -hmm. there were only two or three. But uh, for the premiere at. Uh, Théâtre Jean Villard in Vitry, I think there were 250 people mm -hmm. and it was full. Uh, it was, and I, I'm not an actress. It was my first time uh, I, I went on stage to defend my, and, and to say my, my text. And yeah, it was a, a very different feeling. In the same time, I was really eaten by the, uh, the fear. <laughs> And in the other way, I was uh, uh, supported by the crowd and everybody was very uh, uh, careful uh, to listen to the words and to, um, uh, with a lot of respect, they listened to the story about the genocide. And I, I felt very touched about this, about how, um, uh, people were touched by this story, even if they are very far from the story, even even if they are not black. Uh, it was uh, um, I was very ha happy about that to because it it worked for me like uh, about um, uh, it spoke for me about uh, universalism because in France, uh, unfortunately, uh, th this universalism is ethnical because it's white at 90, 95%. And to, it's important, I think, to show that universalism is not about uh, uh, the color of the skin, but if the story is rich, the characters are complex, it can uh, talk to everybody and everybody can identify. And people in the, in the, in the uh, when I did it on the stage, were very, uh, I think they identified. And yeah, it was a great, uh, it, it was like a small victory for me. Yeah. Fantastic. So it was really different because uh, yeah, I didn't expect so much, so much energy from the, mm -hmm. from the people in the theater. And the, and the understanding was the same as in the hair salon when you did other, your work. Do you, was that the same understanding? What? Mm. Uh, sometimes I was uh, surprised because people laughed <laughs> at moment I didn't expect mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't expect that because it was rehearsals and we were I was alone with my text but mm -hmm. to share it with people you you can find uh, new uh, subtleties or new uh, senses that you didn't uh, imagine when you wrote it mm -hmm. for that it was very interesting. <clears throat> Yeah, um, you both represent in a way also a new generation of theater makers, creators in France. How was your journey? When did you discover that theater was meaningful for you in your life? How, how did you, what was the first things you saw? And then how, did, how was your journey? Maybe, uh, Marine, we start with you. Uh, my journey towards theater? Yeah. Well, um, I think uh, I always wanted to write uh, and I was I wanted to write novels, I think, when I, when I, when I was little. And then I discovered that uh, literature was sometimes uh, cut from the society. 
and I discovered um, the political theater and um, and I, I wrote um, a kind of memory about uh, Dario Fo and Frank Arame theater, uh, which in the 70s uh, they yeah, engaged themselves uh, for to, to make theater also. Uh, out, out of the theaters, out of the institution, to go in, uh, in factories, in streets, in, uh, yes. And, uh, well, I think I studied at the university uh, political theater. I was very um, struck by, um, by uh, Rwanda 94, which was a very long um, show about uh, the genocide in Rwanda. Uh, and uh, well, I think um, I realized that I wanted to write uh, political theater, that I wanted to experiment. Uh, and at, at that time in the 90s, uh, mid 90s, the beginning of, uh, yes, uh, um, uh, Political theater had a bad reputation. It was considered uh, low, not not art, artistic at all. Um, and uh, I wanted to prove that we can uh, be, we can invent aesthetics, be creative with uh, political ideas. Uh, so I think I <laughs> I decided to to, to do this uh, this kind of mission, and uh, and. Yes, that was an, uh, that was evident for me that uh, if I wanted my my writing to to touch people, uh, theater uh, was uh, the ideal art for that. Uh, books books are great, but I think uh, actors uh, actresses can can move people with the words uh, mm -hmm. that I wrote and. Uh, and I like this collective art because uh, we can invent also this uh, this utopy of uh, of uh, collective. Um, and you got into a theater that was like a competition. Or you wrote a play. It was staged by friends. Or how did it start? Or, uh... Uh, it started that uh, I was at uh, at the well in high school. I was uh, making a kind of a theater atelier, and I was on stage uh, amateur. Uh, I was. <laughs> I realized that uh, I was better at writing or at, or at directing. And when I was in, at the university, I, uh, I made an atelier a workshop with uh, Roland Fischer, who was a playwright. And uh, it helped me a lot to, um, to assume that I wanted to write. And this uh, Roland Fischer, who, who was also a, a director of a company, he created, uh, created a group of young writers. So he invited me and some other friends of mine. Uh, and we were in this uh, group of young writers, and we had the chance to, um, to be able to read and to criticize our text uh, and to be in kind of laboratory uh, that help us to, uh, that to assume ourselves as writers, as, uh, as playwrights, and also with first uh, command uh, and first text to a stage. And then when we, when we five, other um, writers, young writers, so we created a, a theater company in red, which is called the Lumière d'Out, uh, Light of August, uh, reference to, to the, the, the novel of Faulkner. And that was uh, the space where I could assume uh, myself being a stage director. I could try uh, to, to prof professionalize myself in uh, also in direction. Uh, I had, yes, I, I had I, I did things before in university, but when we created our own theater company, it was easier for me to, to yes, mm -hmm. jump into yeah. it. Jump into Rennes, of course, is also a great theater in France, and Lucy Sierra um, 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 runs it, who was here, and uh, there was this great history project with uh, Patrick Boucheron. So, uh, but uh, Penda, how, how, how was your journey? How, did you end up uh, in Avignon now in Tunis? How, what, how did that happen? Mm. I think it took uh, a long time for me. I discovered uh, theater very late. I think I was more than 20. 
and I worked for 10 years as a librarian. I managed four libraries uh, during a long time and I quit two years ago to devote myself more uh, to writing and to my artistic uh, practice. And I think uh, when I was a student, I was working in a theater at MC 93 in Bobigny and I'm very happy because they support me a lot now. And uh, I began there um, as a student. So I was working only during the evening for, to welcome people. And I discovered it was, a nice, uh, it was a nice job because I had the opportunity to see many plays uh, from all over the world and, uh, and to, 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 see, to, to see them many times if I wanted to. So it was very great for that. And I discovered, I think, uh, my first big emotion was La Cerise uh, 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 from Chekhov. And it was, uh, the, the director was Jean-René Lemoyne. And all people on stage were black people, black act, act, actors. And it was amazing, not only because they were only black, <laughs> but because, uh, I, uh, yeah, the way he, he showed the Cerise was uh, very different of what I was thinking about. And I, I felt very, I don't know, I think I, I didn't decide it at, at, at this moment, but I think it helped me to, to push the door and to try to, to, to write again and again. I began to write, I was 18, I think. And I think I began to write because I'm very sensitive uh, to situations of, injustice, we spoke a lot about it, and uh, it makes me very angry, and um, writing allows me to put this anger uh, at a distance, and um, also, as Marine said, to share emotions with people I don't know, and uh, I think I write theater, I like to write a lot of things. <laughs> I like to write theaters too, because uh, there are two times and I think it, co it, uh, it corresponds to a part of my personality. Uh, the first time is a writing time where I'm quite um, solitary, even if I always, uh, 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 I'm always not far from people because I'm, I, I want to write uh, with people and uh, about the world. So I, need, I, I, I don't want to be far. But I need some space to write. That's why I'm here in Tunisia. And uh, the second, maybe the second uh, time is uh, when you share with a team, with an audience, what, what you were writing. And uh, it's, it corresponds to a more social aspect of my personality. And fin finally, I think theater is alive. And every night you have a, a new performance. Uh, it's not static like novel. I really like novel and I would like to write one to, uh, one day. But um, yeah, to, to see that everything can change every day uh, is, is, a, is a thing I, I, I really like because it's a collaborative um, work. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that's, uh, that's uh, that quite powerful also. So you were angry, you know, that. And this is a good motivation. I think I like angry voices. Also music, you know, I think the punk and post-punk music, you know, angry songs are touching us. And uh, so tell, tell, take us to that moment when you, you were 18. Uh, what was the first thing you wrote about? And why did you write? What, how did it happen that you said, I think I have to write it down? What, what happened? Uh, uh, what, 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 what did you write about? Yeah, it's a story about a, a family. They are stuck in a, in, a, in a room and nobody goes outside of this room except the father. And the father um, takes some, uh, I don't know how to say, prospectus. Yeah, some public pub, literary material, yeah. Yeah. Uh, leaflets. Uh, leaflets, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. From outside and bring it, brings it at home. And the, 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 the only way for the family to have uh, a contact with outside is the little window they have. But the father doesn't want them to see outside what happens. So he, he, he puts some things uh, on it uh, so they can't see outside. And I think I wrote it because uh, 
Uh, I think I was dealing with uh, something very, uh, an oppression situation, and I wanted to, <laughs> to read of it. And I, I wrote this play uh, about a family, but it can be about a society or about, mm. it's about domination and oppression and patriarchy. <laughs> yeah, and you were already a librarian at that time? You studied? No, I, no, I was 18, so I was still a, a student. I studied Stur student. French literature, yeah. French literature, amazing. And a question to both of you, and maybe to Marine uh, first. France um, is in a way also a superpower of, uh, of theater, you know, like uh, uh, England, uh, uh, Poland, Japan, uh, and many of them in Germany, in a way, there's this big history of plays, you know, the Racines, Corneille, Moliere, and then Nuit, Sartre, and all, everybody, you know, which I could, how do you guys deal with that? Do you feel this is a time to um, reinvent the stories new and the way you, is you adapt the myth? Uh, are these plays meaningful have you, to you or what you, uh, from, your, from the history of the country, or do you feel it's a time now where something new emerges, where it actually, yeah. what is called for is a creation of things that hasn't, have not been there? Well, I think uh, we have to promote contemporary theater and the classical from, 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 from tomorrow. Uh, well, we, at, at school, uh, we have to study Molière, Corneille, Racine, but yeah, as for now, they, they are not um, so much on the stage. I think it's really interesting to, to, re, to, to go and visit them from time to time. I like Molière because um, the, 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 under the comedy there is there are some tragedies, uh, tragic situation, uh, uh, problem of social class, uh, problem of uh, yes, uh, very very cruel mechanics. But well, my priority as a director is not to <laughs> to, 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 to work on Molière or Corneille or Racine. We can be inspired, inspired by, the, by, by, by their poetry. But I think French, uh, French uh, directors, I think they also look uh, on Shakespeare, on Chekhov when they, when they need to, <laughs> to, well, I, I believe in contemporary writing. I, I, I need to, to have a dialogue with, uh, well, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Echille, uh, with uh, Sophocle, uh, with uh, Shakespeare, I don't know. But yes, we need to be a um, kind of a new wave, not to, not to be cut uh, from, we, are, we, we, we have the heritage of, uh, of this great literature, but we have to invent the, yeah, the classical literature, theater literature of tomorrow. Uh, I would say this. Hmm. Penda, you as a, a librarian, you know, so also talk about is the weight heavy uh, or do you see, see yourself not really affected by it? Do you see yourself in a tradition of that writing? And how do you look at it? I think it's a very nice heritage and uh, it's good to know, of course. It's good to, 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 to listen to it and to, to read it. And it's funny because with Marine, we were in a, ju in a jury uh, two months ago for um, a, a national um, school of, of theater. And I was very surprised and very upset because there was a lot of scenes uh, from the students uh, about uh, classical theater and a lot with uh, violence and violence against women. Yeah. And I, had a, I was very shocked because I didn't uh, uh, imagine that there was so much uh, violence, uh, violence against women uh, in our um, theater patrimonial repertoire, yeah. And uh, I was really shocked about it. But um, uh, so it's good to know, <laughs> and it's good to have our own way, and to to, to get to, yeah to be inspired by this theater, but by other things too. Because I think I'm inspired by the the theater, but by a lot of other things, um, uh, les contes, uh, poetry, novels. 
sometimes cinema, and I re read a lot of new plays now inspired by uh, uh, series. Yeah, series. TV series. Mm -hmm. TV series, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the, the base is always the same. It's a conflict between people. It's an argue between people. And I think now we can, um, uh, we can uh, use it and uh, uh, as uh, people from, from today. Mm. Who do you follow? Whose work has influenced you? Like from, from theater makers, filmmakers, or novelists? What, what in your, in your um, you know, uh, field of vision, what's, what, what is of significance? What's important to you guys? Marie. Well, it's a difficult question for me. Um, yes, I, I told about the antiques, Greek antiques are important models for me as uh, the tragedy uh, deals with political issues that uh, go through the, the city. Uh, I think, uh, yes, for, it's important for me. I, um, I like in theater uh, writers, I like uh, Michel Vinaver, was uh, his way of dealing with dialogues, uh, with uh, everyday mm -hmm. life dialogues, uh, which, begin, begin, which become uh, music and very uh, entrelaced. Um, well, uh, I can I, I can quote some plays, but it won't be very significant. I I always try to well to absorb what I read, and uh, I also like a lot to um, to invent uh, languages from documentary pieces, uh, and uh, make this work of things that are not literature. To bring them into uh, into literature, into theater. Uh, well, I don't have now many ideas. I, I would let Penda talk because she has a lot of references, and maybe I, I talk later. <laughs> yeah, hmm. maybe the first one is you, Marina. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you are very inspiring, really. You too. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I'm thinking maybe to uh, uh, the work of. Uh, women like Toni Morrison uh, or Leonora Miano, um, uh, Marine Diaye, uh, because they are writing novels, but they are writing theater too. And the, na the narration, the, 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 uh, the way to enter in their, in their work is narration, like, like in novels. So I like it because I think I, I came in, uh, to the theater uh, with the same way, uh, because I'm not from this uh, I, uh, from this environment, I'm not an actress, but I came at the theater with the novels. So maybe this woman, I like uh, Wajdi Muawad too, because I think he has a lot of narrations in his uh, in his play, and it's I, I, I really like to to read them. And maybe in painting, I discovered uh, last year um, a painter. His name is Augustin Le Sage. And uh, I really like his, uh, his paintings. And he's, he has a funny story because he was a minor. And when he was uh, um, under the, under the, the, the sure. ground, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he, he heard a voice. And the voice said to him to, to to buy something uh, to, to paint. And he began uh, to paint and he, he, become, he became a, a real famous painter in France. Uh, so I, I really like his, uh, his life and uh, his paintings too. Hmm. It's heteroclite. <laughs> yeah. Marine. Good. So, um, if, and then maybe, you, you know, so I mean, you talked already, but what, what are your projects? What are you working on? Or what would you like to do? Both of you, what's, what's coming up in your um, pipeline of, uh, of, of engagements? Yes. Uh, well, uh, in July, I will, uh, I will present uh, Circulation Capital in uh, Avignon, Festival Avignon. Oh, congratulations. Oh. 
thank you. Now it's uh, off, but uh, we are very happy to to. And it's very it's a, sh a particular show for me. I am on stage with the uh, two um, actors, uh, and that was that's a work about uh, you know family memories, uh, France, Vietnam, uh, Russia. Uh, and it's a very personal and collective work. Uh, we we tried to to um, uh, to to, to um, sorry, I'm I'm, I'm quite uh, tired. No, you, you both <laughs> speak so beautifully. No, not at all. Well, we we went through our family stories um, with trying to question them uh, in resonance with, uh, with the big story and the, the big ideologies, uh, Christianism, colonialism, uh, uh, capitalism and communism. And yeah, that's a quite uh, emotional and political um, show. Uh, mm. Very, very, very sensitive, very personal. So we are very happy to there are a lot of uh, work about languages, about songs uh, inside. So we are very happy to, to be able to, to, to show it. And uh, for my other project, I would say this, uh, this work, uh, this writing about Trantonia, this uh, Vietnamese woman I talked about uh, yeah. uh, earlier. And in the next years, I would like uh, to, um, to create a show uh, that uh, will be called Boat People. And uh, I will collect testimonies from Vietnamese and Cambodian communities that arrived in France uh, after, um, in, after 75. That, uh, and uh, yeah, I want to tell about these uh, stories of Asian communities that, that, are, that are quite discreet, discreet or invisibilized in France and about the emergence of the human, humanitarian actions in, in Europe and in France with all the ambiguities of, uh, of this uh, humanitarian, humanitarianism. Uh, and well, that's a, that's a project, and I I would also like to uh, to direct one of uh, tender plays uh, in the next years. I don't I don't know which which plays. I have an, I have an idea, but we are we are talking about uh, this too. I, I would be very happy to to yes contribute to to the the circulation of uh, tender's writing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marine. Um, uh, for, 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 for me, maybe we can, I can speak about um, a project we have together with Marine because uh, Marine invited me to, um, to a collective project with another author. Uh, her name is Karima El Karaz. And uh, Marine asked us to write a text um, that we read uh, together about our ancestors. And all, of, all three of us have a link with uh, colonization, even if we didn't experience it directly. And uh, three of us have a link with the language of origin too, uh, sometimes because we speak it and sometimes because uh, we, we don't speak them at all. I don't speak my origin language. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's, an, it's a nice performance we do, and we, we will have one, I think, uh, at the beginning of, uh, of July, July, before we go to Avignon, yeah. And uh, after that, um, I have two projects with the uh, Théâtre National de Strasbourg, and I am very happy to work with them um, during this summer and uh, in September. Um, I'm go uh, now I'm, go I'm in Tunisia to work to, to write a play. And uh, I have also a reading in Berlin at uh, Deutsches Theater with Kevin Riedberger, uh, who is an author and a director. And it's a beautiful story because he read my two plays, La Grande Ours, uh, Die Grosse Berinde and uh, Piste. And he liked them. And he had started a text uh, about the presence of uh, soldiers of, colon, uh, of co colonies, of French colonies uh, in the Rhineland uh, between the two world wars. 
and he offered me to complete the text, to add something, to cross it, uh, um, uh, to, to cross out, sorry, to cross out if it, uh, it if, um, if some parts that didn't suit me. And he, he trusted me and I thought it was a very uh, generous gesture from him. Um, so there is a reading in Berlin, and after that, I have a partnership with MC93 uh, in Bobigny, and the end is uh, this July. Uh, PIST is touring in France and in Germany. I do a lot of readings in Germany now, mm -hmm. and there's a podcast uh, on France Culture about uh, theater and about uh, uh, um, uh, police violence, uh, and it will be available at the end of June. And I think uh, that's it. And I'm working on an opera in, uh, in Australia. In Australia, sorry. Mm -hmm. Wow, there are, um, there are you know, a lot of, lot of work ahead of you. And I hope, Marine, you, you will get the job. And, um, yes, I hope and so. after I, this I... talk, we fully endorse you. And uh, you can say that and quote it as a voice of change. Yeah, what did you say? Thank you. No, no, I, I was remembering that uh, next uh, weekend, I, I'd be in Berlin too for a reading of my play uh, Les Ombres et les Lèvres, Shadows and Lips, which would be in a queer theater anthology, because it's a, a, a play I wrote about LGBT movement in Vietnam, contemporary Vietnam. And uh, well, uh, it was uh, translated into, uh, into German. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I also been in Germany. And mm -hmm. thank you very much for, for this talk. And I'm really sorry for the French electric cuts in theaters. <laughs> it happens. So in the, the theater, the, it went out in your theater, the electricity went out. That's incredible. <laughs> um, and yeah, so really um, um, that's quite, a, quite an update, you know, from, um, from France and uh, to hear from both of you and um, Panda from you and your work, uh, incredible book story also, you know, working for 10 years in that library's writings early on and now moving to theater. And, um, and so it's uh, hopefully one day and soon you will also uh, come, um, come here. And I like that symbol, what you said, you know, you're under the earth, under the ground, not on the surface, not on the light. And you hear a voice and the voice tells you to create art and it you know and it happens so it is something important and i think uh, perhaps also in this time of corona something to think about for all of us also for the listeners you know write your poem and do your painting and uh, write something down or play and make music you know it is our lives that we have and uh, when we listen to artists it's ultimately it is really about us and uh, what it means to us in our lives so um, thank you all really for, um, for, for being there. We had another week um, of Siegel Talks um, here at the uh, Siegel Center. We had talk number 150 this week, which is an incredible milestone. I think we will slowly come to an end with the focus of Corona, but ultimately um, going, uh, um, continuing um, um, these conversations, the global conversations. We also think we will get perhaps more involved in the fabric of theater here in New York with work in the parks. As you both also have said, it was important to hear that it is of importance to be outside and to create a festival, which we do not have nothing compared to a, a Avignon festival and who knows what this time uh, will, will bring to us. Next week we continue, um, we will have uh, Again, artists from around the world. We're going to have Gerald, Gerald Thomas, who's from Brazil and the US, but also partly uh, from Germany with some Russian family. And then we will have Abhishek Tapar from uh, India, who lives in Amsterdam, who just gave his presentation um, at the Hoher Festspiele uh, in, in Germany, and the great Sybil Kempson and the Seven Daughters of Eve. That's her company. She's a creative director, actor, uh, artist, and writer. And um, we're going to hear what she's up to. She lives now upstate New York and uh, creates also great ceremonies, um, which she has done inside a museum, so uh, solstices and other things. So we uh, continue to listen to voices um, for that come out um, of the theater. And really, it was very impressive uh, what you both said today. It was very important for us to hear MS messages and um, and we all hope that this time of corona will bring a change in what has become visible and the brutality of police or say what you both are closer to than others, you know, to that it becomes a bit more on the minds 
of everybody that this has to change. It needs to change. It cannot stay how it was. And we shall never just think to go back how it was before. It was already not working. So, um, and theater is a place that can highlight that and, uh, and can help us to imagine a new world as you both do in your work. So thank you all. Thanks for HowlRound again for hosting us. And of course, for you, uh, the listeners, for taking time out of your busy life. So, so much is online all of a sudden and, uh, and so much good things also. So it means a lot to us that you are staying um, and with us. And I hope it's something meaningful also for you in there and for your own life and to make sense out of the time you live in. It helped me to make sense, at least in this hour. It helped me closer to the world. So thank you again. And uh, I wish I was in Tunis too and uh, could jump in the ocean, but quarantine wouldn't let me do it. And uh, or to have some oysters in the Normandy, but um, it will happen one day. Thank you so much again, really. Thank you. It's a great privilege to have both of you with us. Bye-bye.